Time now for the morning rush. A revised bill that would legalize pot now heads to the House floor for debate. As it stands right now, the bill would allow New Mexicans 21 years and older to buy and use marijuana recreationally. The bill would also let part of the sales tax go towards state and local governments. Pfizer has announced this morning that its vaccine is 100% effective for children ages 12 to 15. Of the more than 2,000 volunteers ages 12 to 15, data showed that there were no cases of COVID-19 among the fully vaccinated kids compared to 18 among those given dummy shots. Well, they say that the plan is now to ask the FDA to allow the emergency use of the shots starting for ages 12 and up. Well, thousands of migrant children could soon be housed here in New Mexico. The federal government is asking Glorieta Camps to possibly take in more than 2,000 kids. They're also asking for hundreds of volunteers to step in and look after those children. Still unclear as to what their ages will be or how long they'll be there. New Mexico Democrats have narrowed the field with two candidates left who could fill Albuquerque's open congressional seat. After the initial vote, no candidate received more than half of the vote. That means there will now be a runoff vote today between the two candidates left, that is State Senator Antoinette Cedillo Lopez and State Rep Melanie Stansbury. The winner will then run in a special election against Republican Mark Moores. And layer up today. It's going to be a cold morning. Temperatures staying in the upper 30s through 9 a.m. A little warmer by noon. A great afternoon to do a workout outside, just maybe needing an extra layer. And today our temperatures will top out in the low 60s. APD is currently investigating a deadly shooting at an apartment complex. This happened last night on Eagle Ranch near Paseo. Right now, police are calling it a suspicious death, but homicide detectives were called to the scene. They are still in the early stages of the investigation. Albuquerque police are also investigating a shooting at an apartment complex that is notorious for crime. This was the scene at the Rising Phoenix Apartments near Louisiana and Gibson late yesterday afternoon. Details are limited, but a man was found dead. The Rising Phoenix has been a problem property for years with crime, code violations, and homeless issues. Two Albuquerque Little Leagues are now searching for the person who stole almost $20,000 worth of baseball equipment. The Alameda Little League president says the thieves broke into their equipment building through the roof. Westgate Little League is also faced with $5,000 in stolen equipment and damages from last month. The Kiwa Pueblo is, uh, Village is now celebrating big strides in the effort to revamp its traditional homes. The Pueblo hosted an open house for federal and state officials yesterday, showing off a newly renovated adobe home. It's one of about 150 traditional homes in the village that have fallen into disrepair, and the Pueblo hopes to restore them. The project is now made possible by federal and state funding. Virgin Galactic is giving us a look at their latest spaceship. The VSS Imagine is Virgin Galactic's first Spaceship Class 3 vehicle. Officials say this new ship marks the beginning of Virgin Galactic's fleet that will one day take people to space. The VSS Imagine will go through ground testing before undergoing flight tests at Spaceport America. And here's a look at the Metro Threat Index for today. Very low. The only issues you'll see with the weather today is just going to be the cold temperatures this morning that are starting out in the low to mid 30s. Social Security recipients can now expect to see their stimulus checks sometime in the next week. That's according to the IRS. They say that it's received the payment information for the 30 million beneficiaries still waiting on a payment. Those checks could arrive a week from today on April 7th. The department has also so far issued 127 million payments. Well, the Rio Grande is expected to be an extreme drought this year, creating tough conditions for local farmers and putting New Mexico's beloved chili in danger. Farmers are having to rely on heavily on their pumps to bring in the groundwater. Well, farmers can also choose to transplant some of their crop, but that's yet another pricey option. There are problems, though, using the pumps since they typically produce saltier water than the river. Law students at UNM are targeting a Trump-era policy that weakens the Clean Water Act. The Laguna and Hemis Pueblos argue that the policy change could cause pollution upstream and possibly contaminate their water supply. Students can appear in court with a licensed attorney, so they will be part of the case. Now, they are hoping that the Biden administration will resume protections provided in the Clean Water Act. Bernalillo County officials are putting the finishing touches on the budget for the next fiscal year. The more than $718 million budget is 11 percent higher than last year. A big chunk of that money will then go toward health and public safety. The county commission is scheduled to vote on the budget next Tuesday. NMSU will now be holding a limited in-person graduation. The ceremony for grad students is set for May, uh, Friday, May 14th. The undergraduate commencement is the following day. Now, each student is allowed to invite two guests. The ceremonies will still be broadcast, though, so families not able to attend can watch. 
And here's a look at traffic. The maps are clear this morning, all green across the metro. And the weather is quiet. You shouldn't have any issues, but be sure to grab a coat. A group of Albuquerque middle schoolers from Annunciation Catholic School, they are getting national recognition for creating a completely sustainable city for the future. The model of the city comes complete with a communal area atrium, hydroponic growth chambers for food, and even a ski resort. That project has won them some regional awards in the future city competition in the state, but now they're national finalists. Time now for the five facts. At number five, a group of seventh graders from Annunciation Catholic School, they are getting national recognition for creating a completely su sustainable city for the future. The model of the city comes complete with a communal atrium, hydroponic growth, chambers for food, and even a ski resort. The eight-month-long project has won them some regional awards in the future city competition here in New Mexico, but now they are national finalists. You can vote for that group in the national competition. We have a link at alwaysonkrqe.com. At number four this morning, the Rio Grande is expected to be an extreme drought this year, creating some tough conditions for local farmers and putting New Mexico's beloved chili in danger. That's forcing farmers to get creative in order to bring in a good crop, no matter the price. Pumps on some farms run 24 hours a day, and it's still not enough for a full crop of chili to be planted. Some will have to be transplanted. The natural water, natural water sources are still a better match for the crops, and this challenge is coming on the heels of the pandemic. And it's going to be a cooler day today, so you may need some extra layers. Temps in the 50s and 60s across the entire state. At number two, looking ahead, thousands of migrant children, part of the surge coming in through the southern border, could soon be housed here in New Mexico. The federal government is asking Glorieta camps to possibly take in more than 2,000 kids. The camps are asking for hundreds of volunteers now to step in and look after those children. But, the Gloria, but Glorieta is not the only U.S. location getting ready to receive them. Still unclear as to what the ages of the children will be or how long they will be there. And at number one this morning, breaking overnight. A revised bill that would legalize marijuana in New Mexico passed another hurdle in Santa Fe and now heads to the House floor for debate. The bill was under debate before the House Judiciary Committee for nearly five hours. That now heads to the full chamber for consideration. As it stands right now, the bill would allow New Mexicans 21 years and older to buy and use marijuana recreationally. A separate bill introduced in the Senate would then deal with the expungement of arrests and convictions for marijuana possession.